everything you need to know about QA industry in Canada. We'll discuss in this video. Hey everyone, I'm your Abdit Kait Sahil Gogna. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we are going to discuss the skills you require for the QA jobs and the salary, whether you should choose a university or a college and also about the interview processes. So it's going to be everything about the QA jobs. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe the channel because it gives me a lot of motivation to reach a lot more people and to interview them. And also if you have any suggestion on how we can improve our interviews or you have any particular industry that you would like me to explore, just go to the comment section below and share your thoughts. So without any delay, let's get started. Pramod, first of all, thanks a lot for sparing your time and joining the call today. You're welcome. And Pramod, before we start our conversation, can you please tell the audience something about your background? I mean the educational and the professional background. So I did my undergraduate in information technology stream in India. And after that, I got uh, selected for a company. So I did work for like two years there. And after working for two years, I felt like uh, I want to pursue my career in Canada. So I moved to Canada to do my master's. I got an admit from uh, Concordia University for quality systems engineering program. So I did my master's at Concordia and I graduated in June 2018. And after graduating, I got selected for a company named and I have been working since in Canada for three years till now. And Pramod, if we talk about your first job, like this, this is your first job and when you graduated, so how hard was it to get this job? So what were the major challenges that you faced and what you did to overcome them? Um, okay, so I completed my master's by June 2018. In 2018, it was a very competitive market because uh, there were less, less vacancies for QA positions, but there are more candidates that are applying. So um, on an average, um, it, there were like 100 applicants for one position on LinkedIn. So whenever there is a QA position uh, vacancy that was posted on LinkedIn, I can see like 100 applicants applied within two or three days. So it was very competitive and uh, it took me like three months to get my job. I got my first job by the end of August. But right now I see many companies are hiring because of the work from home uh, facility because many companies have lesser office expenses, right? So they are allocating that budget for hiring. Okay. And if we talk about the college versus university thing, so a lot of students ask me that they want to go for a QA profile and does it really matter if they are a college graduate or a university graduate and what would you suggest to them? Should they choose a college or university if, uh, if their final aim is to land a QA profile? Um, I would say they have to check the course content because it doesn't matter if it's from a college or a university. Uh, if, if a person wants to pursue a QA career, he has to go through the course content, like what are the subjects and what are the content of the course, right? So I think that plays a pivotal role in terms of uh, selecting whether it's a college or a university. Um, and also in terms of having a degree or not, uh, many people are saying that degree doesn't matter these days. Yes, but mm -hmm. I strongly disagree with that statement because I want to add like two points. So, for example, um, if you have a degree from McGill or Concordia, uh, they are reputed universities, right? So that definitely adds a value to a profile. So, and also like a recruiter, if he wants to um, scrutinize 10 or 15 resumes, if someone has a degree from any reputed university or an exact course where that position is related to, so definitely that person will have more priority among others. And if we consider the people who cannot make into a university because they might be having a bad record in the in their bachelor's degree what should they look for a course or a, a diploma when they are joining a college because there are a lot of colleges that are also offering the uh, you know sort of specialization in QA so there needs to be something like not everyone can go to a university as as I have mentioned the reasons so what would you suggest to them? Like what should they actually look for in a course? Um, okay, so in terms of selecting a course from the colleges, they have to check the reviews for that college. Mm -hmm. So there could be like a couple of websites that I am not sure that maybe have the list of colleges with the reviews as well, right? So I think that uh, will help a student to select in terms of uh, which college he wants to study in. And also there's a website named uh, ratemyprofessor.com. In, in this uh, website, a, a person can actually type the professor's name and he can check, oh, okay, so what are the uh, reviews regarding this professor? And based on that, he can select the course because most of the colleges or universities might 
have the list of subjects with who is going to be the uh, instructor for this course so based on that they can definitely select and yeah at the end honestly at the end what matters is how much knowledge you have gained right so if you have a very good professor it doesn't matter if it's a small college or a good university whether you are able to answer the questions as per the expectations of the recruiter is the one thing that matters in terms of uh, cracking a job interview and while you were telling me about your first job so you mentioned one very important point that there was a lot of competition that for one single profile over hundreds of candidates were applying for the profile right so what would you suggest to people in terms of profile building how should they overcome this competition or how they can make their profile stand out from the rest of the people the first and foremost point is keep updating yourself with the new tools that are coming in the it market whether it can be a career and list position or developer or whatsoever because you sh- you should be prepared for a longer run right so right now selenium uh, web driver with java is dominating the qa market but selenium web driver with python is going to be the the next uh, i think it's going to be a boom for the next couple of years it, it's going to come actually into the market so i think plan for the future in such a way that there are limited amount of resources but there are a lot of it so that's what you have to prepare for and in terms of facing the competition don't be stressed at the end because i think everyone is on the same boat so don't consider competition and be stressed about it just make sure that you are um, you are meeting the uh, recruiter's expectations okay Hey. and pramod if we talk about the interview so while you were appearing for your f- job interviews so you might have gone through a lot of job interviews before getting this job right so what what was the common trend for the interviews like how many number of interviews uh, did you appear for one company and what was asked in each interview what was the level of difficulty so can you please tell us in detail about the interview process for the qa profiles uh yeah sure uh, so for my first company um i applied for uh, before getting my first job i up, i had interviews with three companies so the general process will be like the first the hr will contact the candidate and he'll take an hr interview for like 15 minutes just to know about his introduction and the background and once they are impressed with it they're going to call you for technical interview um so technical interview there could be two rounds or there there could be only one round if it's two rounds it's going to be like 45 minutes and 45 minutes if it's only one round it might go until one and a half hour um so i would say an interview um the technical interview might have the introduction questions for the first 5 to 10 minutes the questions about my degree for another 5 minutes and questions about my previous experience for 20 minutes and any technical test if they want to conduct any coding test or um um test case solving uh, skills they they can uh, do that as well for the 15 minutes and i think the last 10 minutes will be like uh, situation reaction questions and how difficult these technical rounds can be and how would you suggest to prepare for the coding rounds that you have mentioned or some uh, test case solving problem so how exactly should a person prepare for these types of interviews these types of rounds actually yeah okay so in terms of testing the uh, test cases i would say there are a lot of resources on udemy and youtube as well where uh, you can find the test cases and what are the ways to what are the different methods to implement in order to solve them and also on the google they have so many websites like guru99.com and um, many other websites that you can find where um, you can find the problem solving uh, scenarios on the uh, on those on those websites so i would say that that will help a lot and in terms of complexity i don't think it's not too complicated the, if you, if you want me to rank from 0 to 10 the level of difficulty will be hardly six because they just want to see um, how what are the methods you are going to implement to solve the test case instead of how much time it is take and i want to clarify one thing from this test case uh, technical interview so is it like they give you a code snippet and then you have to uh, run those test cases like you have to come up with the scenarios whether this test case will pass or not or you have to use some tools so how this thing works i'm not clear about this oh so definitely you have to write the uh, uh, coding test cases they they will give you a, um, a scenario with uh, some of some code with you have to uh, automate it so okay. they will give you a manual test case can you please automate uh, so for example if you want to take an amazon website can you please write a test case just to uh, make a sale on the amazon website that's how it's going to be and the and these skills are they taught in the university or in the program or did you learn uh, on your own while you were applying for the jobs uh for me um honestly so when i selected the course i assumed that it's more of technical so but later when i got into the core uh, when i got into the uh, program i got to know that it's more of managerial content so 
the the course quality systems engineering was more focused on managerial activities rather than the technical side so um then i uh, i wasn't able to uh, gain much knowledge in terms of course content but i uh, learned my coding skills from uh, following uh, youtube videos and uh, pramod if we talk about certification so are there any particular certifications that can give you an edge while you are applying for the jobs so would you recommend any certification to the candidates for the QA roles uh for okay so there is one certification mm-hmm. that is uh, recognized all over the world it's called mm-hmm. ISTQB so for a manual testing position ISTQB certification is an asset for the QA profile to stand out among like 20 30 people who has already applied to the position uh but in terms of uh, test automation um i would say having a certification in java programming language will definitely stand out okay and if we have to define uh, design uh, an exact roadmap for the people who don't have any experience in the qa profiles and they are dire- directly joining their masters program or their pg diploma here in canada so what can be the skills they can develop and what should be the exact roadmap like what what is the first thing they should be prioritizing and then what is the second and so on um i would say first get familiar with all the terminologies that are used in terms of uh, testing activities mm-hmm. either it can be manual testing or test automation as well so once you get familiar with the uh, activity testing activities and terminology so get to know everything about what is an agile methodology and, and what are the other practices that are followed in that agile methodology because it's not just about testing right it's about you, know, you should know the process of uh, how it's going to be done in your co- in the company that you want to aim to so most of the companies right now in the market are uh, uh, following agile methodology so get familiar with it and in terms of technical details i would say um, for a qa engineer the knowledge of uh, browser developer console or the developer tools and uh, experience with uh, github jenkins and uh, uh, test management tool like jira as well for logging the bugs and the documentation you use jira and also apart from all the technical uh, details and and uh, gaining knowledge this this point is very strongly recommended uh, start networking with people who are already in the it market because you have to know what what is going to be the expectations in the market and also in, in terms of uh, networking you might get a lot of referrals as well for the people uh, from the people who are already working in the companies right now test automation using selenium is the most used combination so probably in the coming days um, javascript or python can replace java i'm not i'm not generalizing it it might this my speculation so maybe people who are who actually started who are actually starting the uh, planning their career to start in the qa engineer positions they can probably prioritize uh, uh, python or javascript instead of uh, java and one thing i would like to know is about the uh, coding test that you have earlier mentioned so what level of coding skills uh, candidate should you know develop because people are scared of data sets and algorithms and as you mentioned and they might ask you some problem solving questions right so what should be the level they they should prepare for and also are there any particular data structures that you would suggest them to prepare because there are the beginner data structures like uh, they can work with arrays they can work with some string manipulation right or there are some advanced data structures like graphs or the heaps right so what should be the extent for the preparation um for selenium definitely uh, the most of the focus will be on oops concepts inheritance polymorphism and encapsulation and And, uh, most r- related oops concepts so i would i would give uh, this recommendation for most of, uh, for all the people who wants to apply for the testing job because test cases are focused on oops concepts and once you are very familiar with it i'm sure anyone can crack the interview and you have mentioned that while you were applying in 2018 the market was very competitive but what are your views f- for the current market is it open to freshers or is it looking for the more experienced people so what's the current job scenario and how's the current market for the qa roles um unfortunately a fresher positions are a little bit lesser compared to the experienced positions but there are chances that you can find internships in many companies uh, because actually it's the market is very good right now because there are a lot of uh, startups that are coming in the cities like montreal toronto and vancouver and even in halifax as well uh, also a few companies from us are also expanding their base in canada like uh, ibm 
Amazon. They're actually establishing their IT base in Canada as well. Right now, I feel that market is much better. You have lesser competitions because uh, because the companies have a lot of budget that they have uh, saved for the last couple of one year because of the work from home, right? Com- many companies are actually uh, utilizing that budget for hiring. And you have mon- mentioned one good point about the internships. Even in my friend circle, there are a lot of people who didn't have any experience back in their home country and they develop the, all the skills that you have mentioned, be it the basic uh, pro- uh, problem solving capabilities, be it learning the tools like Selenium and everything, and then they applied for the internship. And they currently they are working with the good companies as, as a Q analyst. So I think that's the key point that you have highlighted for the freshers. Apart from the uh, internships, also there are, there are freelancing opportunities that are uh, that are available because, for example, there is a website named Upworks. So okay. here you can actually post yourself uh, your resume and your skill set as a freelancer and if a company wants a uh, short term project just for two months they can actually look for people who are who are ready to um, work for like two months of contract and definitely there are more chances that company can find your profile much more attractive and you might get a chance to work with them and promote final question for today it's about the salary so what salary can an individual expect for the qa roles be it a fresher or be it experience so what what's the range for the salaries um on an average a fresher can expect uh, 55000 to 65000 dollars per annum for the qa positions and also uh, this range depends on the city's cost of living act as well so for example you can expect a higher package in vancouver or toronto compared to a company which is located in halifax right yeah. so yeah i mean it's based on the city's expenses and how the other companies are uh, of how much the other companies are offering in the market as well and if we have to expand this range for the experience let's say 2 to 3 years of experience people who are coming from india so what can they expect minimum 65000 dollars per annum to $75,000 per annum. That's amazing. Well, thanks a lot, Pramod, for your valuable time. This was really a great conversation and it has given a great overview of the QA industry here in Canada. Thanks a lot for joining. So guys, this was our today's video about QA industry in Canada. I would like you to go in the comment section below and share your thoughts because this content producing is useless until and unless it's benefiting you. So I would really like to know whether it's helping you in some way and what type of industry would you like me to explore next. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe.